Welcome to the 2021 ICMA Conference Attendees. I'm so excited to be here with you. My name is Jen Ernest and I own The Chef's Garden, a catering and event planning firm based in Florida. I'm also a co-creator of Jen and Jamie's, an online marketplace where we share our love of cooking and entertaining through a series of blogs, virtual cooking classes, and our culinary and entertaining boutique where we feature ready-made appetizers, sauces, and stocks, in addition to our favorite culinary, entertaining, and hosting products. We believe any occasion can be turned into a special occasion, and we want to show you how to do that with ease and while having fun. So this is the perfect place to start. I'm excited to share my tips and tricks for creating the perfect fall-inspired cheese and charcuterie board. So what do we need to get started? First, I want you to think about what vessel you're going to use. Really, the sky is the limit when it comes to what you can use. I've chosen a really great, nice wood serving board, um, but you can use anything around your house from a charger plate, a grate plate, a pan that you cover with a piece of craft paper. You can use your countertop if you want, so you can really use anything when creating this grazing board or table. Next, you need to think about what products you want to use. So, you're obviously you're going to want to feature some great cheeses and charcuteries, but then you want all of those accompaniments. You want to think about what your favorite things are um, and what is in season. So start by going to the farmer's market or to your local grocery, um, going through those aisles and saying, what is it that I love? Pick flavors that work together, but also colors that work nicely together. Um, so what I've done here is I pulled some of my favorite items together and I've laid them all out. And so I've clearly made them so it looks like a great presentation for you all to see. But either way, I recommend getting all of your ingredients out so that you can see them. It makes it easier to work with. You're also going to make sure that everything you have looks pretty together because that's what's going to come together. You're going to have things that taste great on your board, also things that look great on your board. So usually if I'm doing a larger board like this, I'm going to feature at least three cheeses and two charcuteries. So, and when I'm choosing my cheeses, you're going to want to choose your favorites, but go with a mix of colors and also textures. So I'm using some of my favorites here. I've got a five-year-aged Gouda, um, which I'm gonna use it in the triangular form, but then I also sliced it. And once I sliced it, I broke it in like little pieces because I want it to be nice and crumbly. I don't want it to look perfect. Um, if you're doing this for other people, obviously you wanna wear some gloves. I'm gonna go ahead and break it into little pieces, makes perfect little bites. Then I'm gonna use a brie um, or any kind of triple cream cheese here. Now, when you go to put it on your board, I like things to be pretty easy to eat. So I would never put a whole wheel of brie on here. Um, I go ahead and I slice it. I'm still gonna give it the presentation of a whole wheel of brie, but I'm gonna slice it. And I'm gonna just do four slices, and then I'm gonna slice those slices in half. So I end up with eight slices of brie. And then I'm going with Manchego, um, one of my favorite Spanish cheeses, features sheep's milk. It's got like a nice nutty, buttery flavor to it. Um, so when I slice this, I go ahead and I leave the rind on it, but see how this gives great texture when I go to put it on the board? So I just kind of keep those slices even, really easy, slice right through. And when you put it together, you're just gonna go, you're gonna shingle it every other piece, just like that. And if you want, you can leave the rest of it on there, but I always get it started for people so it's easy. They can pick up one nice, easy piece. So get our cheeses together and then pick out what meats we want. I've selected two of my favorites, Soprasada and Capicola. I've selected these because I like the vibrancy of the colors with them, but really, as I said before, the most important thing is you choose the items that you love. I want you to have trouble not tasting and nibbling as you're creating your board. Um, so, what the, my other recommendation here when choosing the meats is when you go to the deli section, a lot of times you're going to see pre-made or pre-sliced meats. Go the extra step and go to the deli counter and actually have them slice those meats for you. You get a nice, like you get a bigger slice of meat, which makes it easier to work with. Um, and it's also just a little bit more flavorful when you go that way. And then choose your accompaniments. And really anything that you can think of can go on this board. So fresh herbs. Um, different types of nuts, um, seasonal fruits and berries. I've got some figs. So go with what's in season, like black mission figs. If you can get them, they're one of the most beautiful accompaniments that you can put on a charcuterie board. Because we're going fall inspired, you can also use some dips. So think about the vessel that you're using. 
If this were a little bit farther in fall, I would actually be using a pumpkin, but pumpkins aren't available right now. So I'm using a butternut squash, and all I did for this butternut squash is I cut it right here at the core, and then I scooped it out just like you would a pumpkin. Um, and then another great idea for an addition is um, to roast some garlic. Does everybody know how to roast some garlic? If not, I'm gonna walk you through quickly what you would need to do. So you're just gonna take your knife, you're gonna take this side, and you're gonna slice it so that you get, you, you open up where the bulbs are, and then, then you're gonna just take a little piece of foil. And this is really easy. Give a nice, healthy dose of olive oil right on it. A little salt and pepper, and then choose a fresh herb. I love thyme. I'm going to wrap it up just like a little gift, and you're gonna put it in your oven for at 350 degrees for about 45 minutes. It's gonna come out and it's gonna be delicious. Okay, another trick that I like. I love to make edible flowers. So to do this, you do need a mandolin. So I'm taking a European cucumber. The reason that I like a European cucumber is that the skin is edible and the skin really makes this prettier. Um, the skin is edible on a regular cucumber, but I should say it's more palatable on a European cucumber. So with the mandolin, you can order these on Amazon for like $10. They last a long time. If you see this mandolin, you can tell it's been around for a while. You're gonna pick your blade so that you're gonna slice. And you wanna get nice, thin slices, just like this. And you're gonna slice a few so that you get them all to be about the same. And then here's the trick. You also need a small little vessel like this. Okay, so we've sliced our cucumbers super thin. I'm shingling out about seven of them. I'm taking one of them and I'm gonna cut an X right on the bottom of it. And I have my small dish here. So I've shingled them and then I'm gonna to start to fold them. And it's okay if they don't stay perfectly together and sometimes you might lose one, and that's okay too. I'm gonna to stick with six, because that's what it's telling me. I should only use six. And I'm gonna then stick it right in the base here. And I'm gonna set it to the side here. And I'm gonna take my other cucumbers, and I go right around the base of this dish. And I'll keep building until I get it to the right, just like I want it. Then once it's in there and it's holding up, then you can fan your pieces out so that you get, and if you need to stick another piece in, you can just sort of finesse it until you get what feels like the perfect cucumber flower. And this will give great color to our board, and it's also edible, so people can pull these cute little cucumber petals and use it as um, a crudite for their hummus. Okay, so we've prepped all of our ingredients, we've selected them, we have our board, and now we're ready to design. So what are the first steps when it comes to designing? Let's start with the star of the show, which I say is the cheese. Also, it's some of the larger items. So go ahead, and it doesn't have to be in a perfect place. Like, you can always shift things if you want, but kind of use your cheese to sort of anchor your board. Now, the other thing, after the cheese, the other large items, you're gonna put your cheese on first, then you're gonna build in some of your other larger items. That way, when you go to do all of your charcuteries and accompaniments you're gonna build around. Because when I build a board, I love for it to be really full with lots of color. So I start with my cheeses, and I usually, kind of like three corners of the board, sort of build that in. I'm gonna go ahead and take that roasted garlic I was telling you about. I'm gonna pull those herbs off. But here's my roasted garlic. I'm gonna go right in the center for that roasted garlic. 
make that kind of my main attraction. Then I'm gonna take that butternut squash that I was telling you, because it's large. And I've gone ahead and filled this butternut squash just with a little bit of hummus, um, which will garnish a little bit. So I've got my big items on there. My next biggest items are gonna be those cucumber pieces. So again, you just sort of keep shifting just a little bit as you get things on here. I'm gonna kind of break up your colors. So there we go. Got those items on there. Now let's go with our meats. So I'm gonna do like a little river of soprasada going right down. So to do that river, you're gonna to need to give yourself like, it, it works best if it presses up against itself. So you're just gonna simply fold it and fold it again. And choose where you wanna start. I'm gonna start from one end. And we're just gonna keep doing this. And just keep going. So if you're building it and like one of your kids calls or your husband comes by and he tries to snack on your board and you have to push him out of the kitchen, the key is go ahead if you need to stop and just move something so it kind of holds it in place. That's eventually what we're gonna be doing. Like you need to go and replenish on meats. Just sort of pull that back. It'll hold it in place as you keep going. Okay, so super sada is on. It is nice and oily. Luckily I have a towel so I can kind of wipe my hands. Now I'm gonna go with the capicola. And for the capicola, I'm simply gonna slice this, like kind of fold this one right in half. Again, I like to change up the shapes and textures. And I'm gonna let this one just fan kind of on the side of my board. So we're just gonna keep going there. I'm folding these a little bit smaller because I'm letting it kind of just fit right around the cheese. And now, so now we have most of our big items on. Now we get to really play. And this is where we're just sort of working with colors and textures a little bit. I will oftentimes put these on the side, but I love adding in some of my crackers. These are those little everything crackers that you get from the grocery store. They're really easy. I'm a big fan of homemade crostini, but sometimes there's just not the time and these already always look so good. So I will put them on lengthwise, sort of shingle a few of them in here. And again, as you can see, I'm using some of my larger items filling in some space with them. I'm just gonna kind of play with it as you go so that it looks right, feels right. And then I'm gonna take some grapes. Now I love leaving them on the stem. I think they look so much nicer when we do. So I'll build in, but I, I cut them, like when I'm prepping them, I cut them in like smaller little bundles so they're not just like too, too giant. Add those on. And then I do want like to kind of cover up the glass that I've used to hold these cucumber flowers together. So with that, I'll use, like I'm using some of the green grapes and I'm just gonna kind of like, if you need to get rid of some of these stems, just cut it. So I'll fill some of these in around my cucumber flowers. I'm gonna fill in with some of these great cherries. Mm. Remember, I told you when you're building your board, you wanna build up things that you almost cannot resist snacking on. Then we've got these mission figs, so beautiful. I'm just gonna slice it right on the scent side of my board. Fill those in. I'm gonna take some of my pistachios. Again, it's a matter of like mixing up the color. I've got these great um, house-made candied pecans. I'll pull some of those in. I've got my olives, which I actually think I may go 
the whole olive piece right here I think looks nice as opposed to putting them straight on the board since I'm using this little dish. And then I'm going to take some of my peppers because it goes really nicely with the hummus as a dipping item. And I'm going to, I'm going to turn this so y'all can see it. And I'm going to just shingle these little peppers. I just sliced, I got the mini peppers and I just sliced them so they get little rings. It gives great color right there. I'm going to pull that in there. And then I have a little bit of caramel corn and it is a fall board. So I'm going to use this caramel corn. I love it because it's easy. I can kind of build it in. I'm just going to fill in some of the holes with some of this caramel corn. I do that in a few different spots. Right up here. So we're almost there. Our board is pretty full. We've got a spot. So this is where you're just going to kind of like check it and see where do I need to fill in a few spots. I'm going to take, and this is where I think fresh herbs work really, really nicely to fill in some of those spaces just to give it some nice green. I'll take a little bit of rosemary. When I do the rosemary, I'll usually tuck it so that it's tucked in and you can always cut those stems so that it fits nicely into that spot. I take a little bit of sage. I love the sage leaves. I fill some of that in on the center. I'm going to do one more fig. Right off to the side over here. And then I think a few more apricots just to sort of fill in some of my last few spots and I'm also putting these on because I have a few pepitas down here some toasted pumpkin seed which I think makes a great garnish right on top of the hummus it's nice and seasonal to go with um, our fall inspired board and then right here I feel like is where we're missing that last little touch and so on some of these um, like on your brie it's nice to do some like a nice sweet element. So you could do something like a fig jam or any of your jellies. So this is just a nice um, little mixed berry jelly that I'm putting right on top there just to give that final pop of color. And it adds just that great bite of sweetness when somebody goes to take one of those pieces of brie. And really all you need from here are a couple simple cheese knives and picks and you're ready to enjoy. So thank you to everybody that joined from the 2021 ICMA conference this year. I hope that you feel empowered to go home and make a beautiful cheese, cheese board to enjoy with your friends and family. And please stay in touch. I hope I get to cook with you again soon.